it's Xena, Warthog Princess, also known as the Warrior Princess. This will be a discussion about how um, we get a call sign. So first thing is, look, what is a call sign? Well, call sign is just a nickname, but it's given to you. You are named by your squadron once you get combat mission ready um, versus a nickname that anyone, you can just make up yourself and whatever. So um, sometimes it's one and the same. You may get named what your nickname was previously, although that's less common. So that's the first thing. It is a fighter pilot tradition. It's been adopted by other military and non-military units throughout the world. But if you think of like, Top Gun, you have Maverick and Goose. Well, same, I'm Xena and other people have other names. So how do you get named? Well, every airframe and every squadron within those airframes all have different ROE. ROE is rules of engagement. Um, and within that little tradition tweaks and, and whatnot. But the general rules apply is once you're combat mission ready, you get named. You get named, it sticks. If you take it to combat, then generally you don't have to get renamed later. Um, although different squadrons have different rules about that too, and make you buy back the call sign you already have. Anyway, um, that's getting deep into the weeds on the topic. Um, other rules of engagement might be that the ceremony that itself, how you are named, well, let's just say <laughs> there is alcohol involved. Um, it's just a funny thing that it is what it is, but it's a very entertaining evening for everyone, for sure. Um, and even if you don't drink, it's still, it's hilarious. So um, every squadron has different traditions and rules of engagement. So let me start with where I started, and that was with A-10s. That's the Fairchild Republic A slash OA-10 Thunderbolt II. Its nickname is the Warthog, hence Xena Warrior Princess became Xena Warthog Princess. So anyway, so what does it look like? What is my plane? Well, this is the Warthog. This is the old style paint scheme. Um, I did actually fly some green ones when I was a lieutenant in Korea because they were the last squadron to get updated. The paint schemes then became Air Superiority Gray. So they were much harder to see actually visually as you're looking both down at the ground and up at the sky. So that's the Warthog and the color. And I was in Korea, so um, definitely an adventure there. I did a little pickling of my liver in those days, but our traditions included one, you had to be combat mission ready. You had, um, you had to toast the squadron as part of your toast, something about the squadron, which for me was the 25th Fighter Squadron, and they were the Assam Dragons. It was a squadron mascot, if you will, whatever. And there's a story there too, another day, another time. But if you'll see behind me, I always have these pictures. Actually, coincidentally, that is a dragon, and our colors were green and gold. And that picture over there, is actually a unit photo from Korea. So now you know what you've been looking at this whole time. Anyway, so there I was in Korea and you had to toast the squadron and the lieutenants would prepare a bullet. So this is a bullet, a 30 millimeter bullet. It's not got any um, gunpowder in it. It's demilled or whatever, see? No firing pin or anything. It's just a award decoration. This was actually um, top gun for my <laughs> training, anyway. Um, so this is a, a trophy, if you will. But if you imagine this without the tip on it, that 30 millimeter shell is about seven shots of alcohol. So that's a lot of alcohol. We had to toast the squadron, drink the bullet, invert it to prove it's empty, climb up on the counter and kiss the warthog head that was on the wall. And the little tusk was loose. So if you screwed up any part of that process, you'd start all over again. So. How did I get my name? Well, Xena was very popular at the time. This was back in April of 97. And I was the only girl. So I was a princess of sorts. I was obviously a warrior as a fighter pilot, qualified and now combat ready. And I had a bit of a physical, physical resemblance. Obviously my big fat, <laughs> not now, but at the time I was fit and trim. I had blue eyes, high cheekbones. Um, my hair was brown and you know, anyways, there's some physical resemblance. I can show you pictures another time and we could talk about that, but that's the set, the baseline story. So on my night, I gave a toast and it was something to the effect of to the 25th fighter squadron where men are men and women are goddesses. I had, yeah, it was hilarious, but so they just immediately, everybody shouted out Zena and that was kind of my naming. That is a very non-standard naming, by the way. Um, so people ask me, how did I get my name? I'll be like, well, because I'm a badass warrior princess. And that's kind of the end of it. Um, 
but that's that's it. That was really very simple. But normally, how it works is you might have a couple of lieutenants in the squadron or new people in the squadron that are going to be named on a given night, and the squadron will congregate on a Friday evening after work, after all the jets have landed and shut down and, and the beer lights on, then you go in the squadron bar and you kick out the people that are getting named. See you, bye. You know, everybody's been drinking and all this stuff by the time they kick them out for the actual naming. And then the people that are there who are part of the squadron who are already named, they will tell stories and, you know, drink a lot and, and eventually whittle down a name for the person. So those rules might be that in any given squadron is pretty traditional that it's 10% truth. Well, 10% really isn't very much, you know, so the more entertaining the story, the more likely the name would stick, the more creative and, and whatnot. But so you both, so people just take their turn as they see fit to stand up and tell what the name they recommend and why, and there it goes, and it's just a process. So then they'll bring the person in. Sometimes they bring them in and fake them out and let them pick, and then they make them drink and send them back out again. And there's all sorts of little sub traditions within that. But sometimes a nickname um, could be because of a natural, we call it a natural call sign, which would be someone looks like a certain something. Like we had a guy that got named Pee Wee because he looked kind of like Pee Wee Herman. Uh, we had a guy that their natural had to do with their name. Um, his name was Marks, Jim Marks, and we named him Skid. We go, Skid Marks, makes sense. So it's creative, it's funny, it sticks. Um, <laughs> literally, it sticks, that's funny. Yeah, I did not mean that pun, but that's funny. Okay, so it could be a natural like that. Um, I actually had a natural call sign because of my last name, but they wanted to call me Virgin because of Vestal Virgins. That is um, not politically correct, although it was fine. It was nothing to do with me. Um, but it's, you know, Italian mythology and whatnot. You look up Roman history, it's it's there. I've actually been to the, the palace where the virgins did all their stuff. But anyway, another story. But in our politically correct world as Air Force was transitioning, that was that was not to be. So I ended up getting named Xena, and the story I just told is actually very simple. Um, so other gals have come out with different names. We have a person named Rack because... Well, and actually, there's a story about one of the racks on the jet, but um, there's another gal named Mounds because Almond Joy's got nuts. Um, so, all different ones. Anyway, guys got names like T-Bone. Like, there's a T-handle that shuts the engines down, and he did a bonehead thing and accidentally pulled that. So, he got named T-Bone. T for T-handle, bone for bonehead, T-Bone. Um, anyway, lots and lots of examples. The name might be an acronym for something else. Like we named a person Tulsa, total unbelievable lack of SA, which is situational awareness. We named someone Fraggle, effing ran across Groom Lake, F-R-A-G-L. Groom Lake is Area 51, and it's a prohibited flying area, like surface to infinity. And we fly all around that area, but you can't fly in that area. So he got renamed. Um, but anyway, a lot, a lot of things where names can come from and what they are. Other basic rules of engagement are no whining. The more you dislike it, the more it is likely to stick because, you know, we're fire pilots, get tough or get out. Um, uh, like I said, alcohol, 10% true, all that. So that's pretty much it. And sometimes the names make absolutely no sense at all, but everybody was drunk and having a good time and someone told a good story and close enough to 10% to count. So that's how they got named, but that's it in a nutshell. So if you have questions, let me know, but thanks for watching. Bye for now.